I grew up in Brazil, Mexico, and Spain, and Argentina, and in the UK. And my parents uh, sent me and my sister to high school in London, in England, uh, when I was 16. But it was a very interesting upbringing because both my parents were architects, and they freelanced, and they worked for themselves. And many times, in many of the countries that we lived, the studio was in the house. So practice, the, their practice and their livelihood was very intertwined with family life. And I grew up, since I remember, sitting on my dad's side on his drawing. At that time, architects had big drawing board tables. Nothing was done on AutoCAD or computers. And, and I used to just copycat him. Instead of playing with Barbie dolls, copy my, uh, both our parents, again, with drawing and play with Barbies, but we drew the Barbies. We didn't. We found that more interesting actually having the Barbie itself. So, <laughs> my parents always encourage creativity in the house, but at the same time, they uh, maybe always thought that we would end up doing something more like architecture or engineering or academia rather than actually for pursuing the life of being an artist. And that it was an interesting time because there were lots of arguments with my parents, then very concerned of how I would make a living, how I would survive. A friend of mine told me that there was a good position as a runner in the film industry. So I went to the mill, post-production house company who did films like Gladiator, uh, Black Hawk Down. They did the special effects for all those films. And um, it was a great experience. I started as a runner and I moved up very gradually inside the company uh, for three and a half years. I decided I wanted to become a telecine operator, which creates film. Good telecine operators are 150,000, which is ridiculous money. I was 27 and I knew that I could go two different ways and my life would have very different consequences. Um, at the same time, my older sister got very ill with leukemia. And deep down, maybe I wasn't totally fulfilled by post production, so I gave up the job. Uh, moved to Spain for nearly a year and I looked after my sister. And I think through that process, I just thought, sort the money, I just want to do my own work. And when she got better and I could come back to London, I immediately applied again to Royal College after four years. My fine art photography is very theatrical. It's very stage-based. It takes place in a studio. And I create performances for the camera. It's interesting, I didn't plan to be a mum, so I mean, I say I'm young, I'm not, I'm 32. I mean, I, I think I am very young, but uh, in a sense, um, I never thought I would be a mum at 32. But it's very testing uh, how to still pursue your dreams, having uh, responsibilities outside yourself. And in terms of time allowance, time now is 20,000 20, times more precious than it's ever been. And it's such a cliche, but it's true, because my time is not mine, it's my baby's time. And my sleeping is so small. And suddenly, in terms of having energy for my own, own practice, it's something that I have to accept that it will take time and creativity comes and goes. So whatever you do is gonna, at the end, come together. And, and some people probably know what they want to be when they're five or 10, I want to be a doctor, and I really admire that. But maybe because of how I grew up, it's taking me a lot longer to sort of really define who I am and, and, and to enjoy it. And I don't think to limit yourself by having to choose. I think everything can be done, everything is possible. You can be a chef and you can be an artist and you can be a writer and you can still uh, be a mother. That's the test. And it's gonna take me time to fine tune. And I'm in that process and I just, I think the main thing is I just have to be patient because I'm not very patient. <laughs>